Welcome to the Random City Podcast. Chester Copperpot, he was a pro. He never made it this far. A competitor. He was very, very good. They do have a very particular set of skills. Nunchuck skills, bow hunting skills, computer hacking skills. A person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. I'm rude. You will be. Are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Back off, man. I'm a scientist. You are my brother, Anakin! He's gonna be the third scariest thing on that train. These guys come from legend. They're basically gods. There's only one god, man. But I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. Hello, welcome back to the Random City Podcast. I am Jimmy and Georgia, your host. We're here once again to discuss random stuff here on the Random Show. So good morning to you here on June the 22nd, 2017. This is the newest, latest edition of the Random City Podcast coming out on Thursday mornings as we've been for the past several weeks now. And I've, I've been happy to actually be consistent for quite a while at this point. This is the eighth episode in a row that I've been able to record, edit, and upload and get out to you on a consistent basis. Which, hey, that's like, like the battle when it comes to podcasting is trying to be consistent. And I don't know, I feel like I have enough spare time, (laughs) and I always say this, I always do this to myself, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I should do two a week. And so maybe, sometimes, there might be an extra episode on a Monday or something. And I haven't committed to that fully, but I am toying with that idea of having maybe another episode. So we'll see how that all works out with time and effort and all those things. Because again, I want to be consistent, so maybe... Every other week, there'll be a second episode or something like that. I don't know. We'll get to that at some point. So today, we want to talk about Transformers. Normally, the blockbuster movies are coming out Thursday evening in preview shows, and then Friday. Whereas this week, Transformers, the last night, hit theaters on Wednesday, so yesterday, and actually preview nights were back on Tuesday. So this is slightly different than our normal scenario thus far this summer. And so some of you may have already seen this latest film in the Transformers verse. And if so, let us know what you think. Hit us up on social media or email. I do want to share here, this, this, to kick off the show, some of my Transformer fandom, I guess. And then the majority of the show would be more focused in on these last four movies in the series. Because I, I kind of like doing this as a topic. But I know in some cases I need to find other things to talk about. Which is why I talked about last week on the 15th episode on my mom, the fangirl, from way back when. So... I want to mix it up. I can't always talk about movies. And I love TV shows, too. So we'll definitely, as time goes on, you know, have different topics. But this week, Transformers. And so with Transformers, most of us, if you're in my age group, and maybe not if you're if you're younger, I remember the Transformers, the animated series in the afternoons, coming home from school for several years watching that. And as a result, around that same time, probably 1984, Ooh, five, 1985, 1986, getting into the whole Transformers thing. And I mean, to me, that's what you did as a kid in the 80s. Most everything you liked had all the accoutrements, as you would say in French. If you liked a cartoon show, chances are there's a comic book. Chances are there's toys. There might be a movie. <laughs> there could be trading cards. Maybe a Halloween costume. Who knows? There's all sorts of stuff. Stickers that you could get into with most of the stuff that people like me grew up with. And so I got into Transformers just by watching television afternoons after school. And I really think part of it was the robotic voices kind of captured my imagination. Like just even in the, the trailer. And we'll, I'm going to play a couple old commercials here a little bit later on. I want for some of the old toys and one for the comic books, actually, even though it's using the stuff from the cartoon series. But. I really think that robots on the skies. That whole deal <laughs> kind of like captured my imagination. Oh, it sounds like a robot. A ro- like a Cylon almost or something. I love the Transformers cartoon. I feel like that is like the whole 80s are wrapped up. Uh, well, this came out. I loved it. That came out. I loved that too. Oh, well, I loved this too. And I got the toys. I mean, all these different shows in the 80s had cartoons. And I, I was getting toys for. G.I. Joe's, uh, Silverhawks, He-Man, Transformers. I didn't really ever see masks because it wasn't on our channels, but I have some mask toys. <laughs> I mean, there's just tons and tons of stuff that was a cartoon and a toy. But yeah, the Transformers were so much fun. I remember in third grade, so that would have been 1984, 
actually going back, you know, thinking about different things. I remember getting some Insecticons, three of them, in fact, like a beetle, a grasshopper, and another one. I forget what they all were. And I remember taking those to school. And if I remember correctly, at least one of them got stolen, probably by Mike, because that dude was a big bully. Every school had a bully. My my school with the bully was Big Mike. <laughs> we were in second grade. He was, I think, in third grade. I'm not sure how many times he had failed. He was a big, big kid. I remember him taking my A-Team van. Oh, A-Team's another one. That wasn't a cartoon, but I had A-Team toys, too. I mean, I had toys for everything back in the day. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I love the Transformer. Just, just the idea of taking a toy, apart from the show and the comic books, is I love that stuff, too. But just taking a toy that was a robot and then moving it around and making it into a car or to a plane or to what, whatever. I, I like the ones that had triple changers, I think is what they were called. I had a couple of those. One was a train... A plane and a robot, and I think the other one was uh, something similar, actually, like a plane, a truck, and a robot or something. Yeah, same same kind of deal. Those were kind of fun. I never got the OG Optimus or Megatron. I guess I got into the show just past those barely being available. I remember Christmas 1986, so this was a couple years after I was into the Transformers, was like the big Transformer year. I think 85 was probably the big... Thundercat year. I'm just, I, mean, I don't know. I try to think back over Christmases and what I got. I, I remember one Christmas getting tons of Thundercats, you know, the, the battle tank and all the different toys and stuff. And then one year I got most of the, probably most of the line of the ones that came out after the Transformers, the animated movie or Transformers, quote unquote, the movie. And that was when I was in fourth grade. I, man, I loved those toys. The Alvatron was, was great. And then Ultra Magmus or something like that. I maybe, Getting the last name slightly wrong, but something to that effect. He was kind of a replacement for Optimus in my mind, even though Hot Rod became Rodimus Prime, was the Prime. But he was, in the toy, he had a big giant trailer, but the actual cab that you put the head on and put in part of the trailer to make the big body, it was a white version of Optimus. I don't know. I, I don't know how many of these toys left, and I've, I think I've told the story on the on the podcast before. But I'll share again, just in case I haven't shared lately. Uh, when I was 12, we got evicted from our home. This would have been late 80s. I was a smart kid. I had stuff packed up. I had stuff in boxes. And we were loading up a trailer. And so I'm like, well, anything that didn't make it on this trailer, we'll come back and I'll get the rest of the stuff. But we never went back. And so basically all of my Star Wars stuff went away. All my He-Man stuff. Most of my G.I. Joe. Most of my Transformers. I have a few things that survived. Transformers wise, I can only think of two things that I think I still have out of my pretty massive collection. And that's Hot Rod. And he's not completely finished, complete, but he's mostly there. And then the, the truck part of Ultra Magmus. I don't think I have anything else. I mean, I've gotten a few here and there. I mean, I can't buy everything. I'd like to sometimes, but I can't. And I guess that's the thing, too. Like, I look back on this stuff and I think about it and I'm like, man, this was so much fun. I really enjoyed having this this toy or that toy. And it's that whole nostalgia thing. That whole childhood was nice and it makes me feel good, blah, 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 like you know, nostalgia does. But yeah, I have tons of Star Wars junk now. And so I can't really go out and get a whole bunch of other junk. I, I just can't. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, going back to Transformers. I mean, I had so many of them. I really did. You know, the smaller ones, I, I love Devastator. You combining the little green dump truck and cement mixer, making the big robot. And then uh, I think Rescuer was the one for the cop car and the ambulance and stuff like that. I had those. I had Metroplex, which was a giant robot that turned into like a little city for the smaller little Transformers. I love the toys, love the show. Another random Transformers thing that I had was one of those Choose Your Own Adventure books. And I think it was called something like More Than Meets the Eye. And you could choose, you know, which chapter to go to. Do you do this? Do you do that? And that was kind of a cool thing when I was a kid. I don't know that they make those anymore, but I like those. And I guess before we get too far into the Transformer stuff, I do, I guess I should mention this here too. I really like GoBots as well. I had their little base that looked kind of like an AT-AT. Bunch of those guys too. Uh, <laughs> like I said before, I had way too many toys. But the other thing I had a lot of, I had, I think, basically number one through number 50 of the old Transformer comic books. And so that's one of the, again, one of the few things that have survived. 
evictions, actually twice. There was a second one I lost more stuff at. <laughs> it's good stuff, right? And then, you know, just moving and, and whatever else. But I, I basically, I think I still have those somewhere in storage, and who knows what they're looking like at this point right now. But more or less, I have 1 through 50. And I don't know, I like comic books. I had a ton of comic books as a kid. I had too much of everything, quite honestly, I guess. But when it comes to comic books, I would I would get them, if, other than the Transformers and G.I. Joe, because I already like Transformers and G.I. Joe, I would get some other ones just based on what was on the cover. I remember getting a Fantastic Four because the thing was on the cover, and I thought he looked interesting. Stuff like that. And so I, I had some other ones. My brother had comics. He had mostly uh, Sergeant Rock, G.I. Combat, stuff like that from the 60s, 70s. He didn't do as much of the superheroes. He had some Conan the Barbarian, different things. So I, I'm for the most part, I wouldn't really read the comic books. I would just look at the pictures and try to find something to draw because that's, I mean, that's what I did when I was a kid. If I wasn't playing an Atari Nintendo type thing or playing with a toy or watching TV, I was probably drawing something, and it wasn't here until the past few months that I really have done that again. But yeah, that that was my main thing. And, and once we had a VCR, you know, a few years later, well, we didn't have one eighty-five or eighty-six, but at some point when we got one, maybe eighty-nine, eighty-eight, I loved the fact I could pause TV, pause movies, and and try to draw stuff like the Jetsons or the Flintstones or whoever. I mean, anyway, we did rent VCRs in the meantime. Cause I remember we rented one in. Probably 86 after Actually the Future came out on, on VHS. I remember we were, we were renting them at that point, and we probably had been for a while. So it wasn't like we were unable to watch videos, but we just didn't have one constantly. I guess that's enough of that nostalgia geek out stuff, whatever that is. I don't know. But yeah, not, suffice to say, I really like Transformers. Always have, since I was seven or so. And I was excited about these movies, and uh, we're going to talk about them. Right after this little break, again, I mentioned earlier, we're going to play a commercial of Optimus Prime toy and then a Marvel comic commercial <laughs> that's actually got the stuff from the, the TV series, which is kind of funny. And we'll be right back. From across the galaxy to battle the evil Decepticons comes the ultimate Autobot hero, Optimus Prime. Transforming from big rig into powerful robot, he's the greatest Autobot warrior of them all. With a hidden battle platform. Twin rocket launchers for double the damage. And a light and sound power pack for real battle action. And when Optimus talks, I am Optimus Prime. The Decepticons will run for cover. Transformers! Transformers Generation 2. Optimus Prime is all you see here. It is a world transformed where things are not what they seem. It is the world of the Transformers. The Transformers! More than meets the eye. Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. Transformers. Robots in disguise. Transformers. More than meets the eye. The Transformers from Marvel Comics. All right. Well, let's talk about not Transformers the movie, which came out in 1986, but just Transformers, July 3rd, 2007. So. Man, we're almost there. Ten years ago. That's hard to believe, personally. Wow. But, yeah, ten years ago, Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox and the Transformers. <laughs> that movie was cool. I like it. I still like it. I know people complain about Shia LaBeouf. I think people complain about Megan Fox. In all the Transformers movies, there's things I don't like. There's some uncomfortable humor here in the first Transformers movie, I think, personally. But not as bad as the second one, and we'll get to that in uh, just a few minutes, I guess. But this first movie made three hundred and nineteen million here in the U.S., seven hundred nine million around the world. Rotten Tomatoes looked that up: fifty-seven percent with the critics, eighty-five with the audience. And again, this whole series, Michael Bay people people make fun of Michael Bay for blowing up everything. One of the things I guess I'll, I'll mention here: Steve Lawson pointed this out, and I, I don't even remember the name of the people. Audio something. They made a video of what how to make Transformers better, and it was play John Cena's music every time there's an explosion. That was a great video, by the way. I think that was for Age of Extinction, though. But anyway, Transformers 2007. It's giant robots fighting. It's awesome special effects. It's stuff we kind of never seen before, which is hard to do anymore in special effects and movies and things. They had a good supporting cast, like Tyrese Gibson, John Turturro, and they even had like John Voight. I mean, they had. Uh, definitely a nice supporting cast there. I mean, what's there to say? Bumblebee's cool. Optimus is cool. I've always would have liked the Transformers to look a little more like the old cartoons. 
I mean, they kind of resemble them sometimes, depending on certain situations. I understand the whole vehicle aspect makes sense that someone's endorsed them and got a paid to be a part of it or whatever. But the robot form, I would like to be a little less geary and more old school robot. But yeah, I mean, I like Transformers. I mean, the whole idea of the whole all spark, and then I think it goes into that even more in the second one. They did the interesting thing of making it older than it was, you know, having stuff frozen in time, and and Megatron's been here for, what, 100,000 years or something ridiculous. And so they, they definitely added some elements to make it a little less just, oh, these robots just showed up. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like Transformers. I really do. The Revenge of the Fallen. I'm going to play a clip here. Last week, we had a Falling Skies flashback with, I guess, Mama and Georgia from the Falling Skies cast. And so this week, we're going to have a Random City flashback where we go back to episode nine of the Random City podcast from 2009. And I got like maybe a minute clip here, basically saying what I still think about this movie. Overall, it's pretty good. There's giant robots, but those two potty mouth robots, I just don't like them. It kind of ruined the movie for me. So we're going to go into that clip. We'll be right back. But two of the big summer movies are Transformers, The Revenge of the Fallen, as well as Star Trek, um, the reboot. And both those movies had some interesting things going on in them. One thing with the Transformers, um, there wasn't much of a plot. It was basically giant robots blowing up and killing each other constantly over and over and over for like you know an hour and a half. No, well, actually it's longer, like two and a half hours. But uh, the, a thing that bothered me about the movie, uh, I don't know, it wasn't much to be expected other than you know action and robots and fun stuff like that. But there were just a lot of uncalled for crude robot cursing and stuff. I mean, there was these two robots that were just cussing all the time. So why would you have that in a kid's movie? I mean, this is geared towards those little kids who are like eight years old who want to go get Optimus Prime robot toys from Target. You know, and I just don't like that. I mean, there are definitely some other questionable stuff in there with just the way the, the main girl was dressed and she acted and the little robot girl with the giant snake-like tongue. It's kind of weird. But I mean, overall, it was kind of fun movie, I guess. Just the robots you know, fighting and stuff. I like that. <laughs> I mean, I honestly don't have much else to say. I, I think that kind of sums it up for me uh, still to this day. I, I went and saw this movie in the IMAX. This was my first IMAX movie. It was sort of my first date with my wife. I mean, we'd gone to see Star Trek earlier that summer, but that wasn't officially in a date, I don't think. And then... I don't know. I feel, I think this was like our first actual date. And so I, I guess that also kind of made me hope the movie was a little better than it ended up being. So anyway, Revenge of the Fallen, I didn't go over this, so I guess I'll mention it now. It came out June 24, 2009, so about eight years ago. It made $402 million here in the U.S. and 836 around the world. Rotten Tomatoes, the critics hated it, 19%. Audience went down from 85 for that first movie down to 57 for Revenge of the Fallen. I guess we'll move on from Revenge of the Fallen over to Dark of the Moon. Dark of the Moon came out in 2011. The numbers once more. $352 million here in the U.S. $1.1 billion worldwide. And I really liked Dark of the Moon. Up to this point, it's my second favorite out of the franchise. Which I guess some people would say isn't saying much. I enjoyed it. I really did. I liked the whole thing where they were trying to do the bridge to bring Cybertron to Earth. That was going to destroy the world. The whole Chicago is under lockdown, the ploy where they send the Transformers away and they're really not going anywhere. I mean, there's just some cool stuff in there. There really is. I really enjoyed it. And this is the first time we went away from the original cast. We didn't have uh, Megan Fox here. We had uh, another lady. It honestly doesn't even matter. But the current girlfriend of Witwicky. <laughs> I liked it, though. I really did. The critics of Rotten Tomatoes went up from the 19% of The Revenge of the Fallen up to 35%. The audience was actually around the same. It was 55% for this, so it actually was down for Revenge of the Fallen. So I guess, again, as far as other movies I've talked about here in the last several weeks, I don't always agree <laughs> with the audience scores on Rotten Tomatoes. But, oh well, it happens. And I did like they brought back more of the original cast, you know, the supporting cast out there. In this one too, again, um, and they've been—they were in these first three movies. You know, in the fourth movie, we went away from those supporting cast members. We went away from everybody, and for the most part, I didn't think it was totally horrible. But the first three movies basically are in the neighborhood of two hours and thirty minutes. The first one, two hours and twenty-three minutes. The second one, two hours twenty-four. The third one, two hours thirty-four minutes. 
once you get past two and a half hours in this kind of movie, it's too long. It is too long. And that's my main problem with Age of Extinction. I didn't mind Mark Wahlberg and his little family and the whole deal. I think I found a Transformer. It made a billion dollars again. It was popular enough. It came out in 2014, so three years ago. The critics, again, hated this movie. 18% with the critics, 51% of the audience. This is the lowest rated Transformers movie. I'd say it's my third out of the four, personally. About halfway through the movie, I think it is, they come to a point where they're on a giant spaceship. And it seems like they're about to defeat the evil Decepticons. Then there's an entire another half of the movie where they go to China and there's Dinobots. It was way too long. Ridiculously too long. When I'm in the theater thinking, wow, this is way too long, it's bad. It's really bad. So actually, the more I think about it, maybe this is the worst movie so far. Because I don't think I ever got bored with the second one. I didn't like those two robots and their potty humor. And here... I just got bored. So, yeah, I guess this is the worst one, even though I, I don't necessarily think of it as the worst one. I don't know. I hope this new one's better. And I haven't looked at how long it is. I really hope it's shorter. <laughs> I, and I don't know. I've heard this is, I think this is Michael Bay's last Transformer movie. And so I don't know if that means there'll be a reboot or if they'll continue this. And I keep hearing all this talk about G.I. Joe and Transformers and all these different comics and cartoons or toys or whatever being in a shared universe. I think that'd be fantastic. I mean, they did that in the comic books. They did that a little bit on the cartoon. Not a whole lot, but just a smidge. But yeah, I would love to see that in the big screen. Absolutely. Yeah, even though there's a couple of these movies, I guess, technically, I don't particularly like, I still want to see more of them. At least I do. I'm not sure how everyone else's feeling is. I'm not sure how this new movie will be received. You know, just in the past few weeks, some fairly big Hollywood movies have come out and didn't really perform as well as they had hoped. You know, going back even to Pirates, it did fairly well, but not as well, I'm sure, as they would have wanted. The Mummy definitely didn't do what they wanted. I don't even know what that means for this dark universe they wanted to make. Who knows? But yeah, I'm curious what the future will be for Transformers. So about a week ago, there was some confirmation come out, too, about a Transformers spinoff. Apparently, this has been rumored for a while, a Bumblebee movie. And the confirmation I saw was Empire was reporting that it will be set in the 1980s. And this will be a smaller budget film, smaller scale, not as many robots, not as, I guess, probably not as many explosions and special effects shots. But this will be great for the whole 80s nostalgia of their original Transformers. And so, even some of the older cars, this could be a lot of fun. And so, this might be the. X-Men first class of Transformer movies. <laughs> I guess we'll wait and see. I'd love to hear what you think about Transformers. At the end of the show, we always share how you can get in contact with the show via social media or email or phone. So please, share your thoughts. It'd be great. As we're about to wrap up the show, just do want to remind you, you can go over to audible.randomcitypodcast.com and sign up for a free trial of Audible and get two free audiobooks over on Audible, I did a quick search just to see if there are any Transformer titles. There is a couple of basically guides to help you play Transformer video games. There's also one by a gentleman named Dan Gibblesan, who wrote a book called Bumblebee and Me, Life as a G1 Transformer. And back in the 80s, he was cartoon royalty, I guess you would say. He was Peter Parker and Spider-Man in the 1981 Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends that I absolutely loved. And then also, he was Bumblebee in the original G1 Transformers cartoon. So, you can check out his thoughts about being Bumblebee if you sign up for a free trial of Audible. So, if you want to send in your thoughts about Transformers, toys, comics, shows, movies, whatever it might be, you can do that in all sorts of different ways. You can tweet to us at Random City. You can send us comments or whatever over at Random City Podcast on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook and Google+. Plus. You can also find the show if you're listening to this one. You found us already, obviously, but there is an RSS feed on randomcitypodcast.com. You can find us in iTunes. You can find us in Stitcher via the Jimmy and Georgia radio. You can find us in Google Play and, as we mentioned last week, in the Satchel Player. So all sorts of different ways you can listen to the show. And if you are listening in a way that you could uh, rate or review, please do. That would be fantastic. We'd greatly appreciate it. If you want to send us an email, email is randomcitypodcastgmail.com. You can call or text into the show if you want to leave a voicemail. Or just send a quick message to 77371-RANDOM. 
And so, I guess that's going to wrap up this episode. And we may see you soon, I'm not sure. But if not, we'll be back next Thursday with another edition of the Random City Podcast. And until then, peace. <laughs>